Hello, this is Michael. Thank you for listening to the podcast today. I do really appreciate it. You know, if you'd like more information, you can visit me online at michaelottministries.org. And while you're there, be sure to get my email address and send in your prayer request and your comments. It's always wonderful to hear from you. Did you know that I'm also on iTunes and Podomatic and Google Play and a few other places, and you can go online to michaelottministries.blogspot.com, and there you can subscribe to my blog by entering your email address in that little box on top of the page. Thanks again for listening in today, and as always, before we begin, I'd like to take just a moment and pray for you. My loving Father, thank you so very much for all who hear these words. I pray for them and for each person that they love, for their families, their friends, all their acquaintances. Father, I pray for their lives and everything in their lives. I pray that you bless them with your presence, that you make your presence in their lives known, that they would be at peace in their heart and know that you are with them. Father, I ask you to bring them through all their troubles and trials and let them be refreshed and encouraged and know that you're the God who's always with us. And I praise you and thank you through my Lord and Savior, your Son, Jesus, the Messiah, my Savior and King. Amen. The message today is called, I Am Here. As I was praying earlier, Jesus spoke to me, and he asked me to write down these words and share them with you. He said, Little children, so many of you seek wisdom and knowledge, and you're still eating of the wrong tree. What you should seek is relationship with me. In me dwells all the wisdom and all the knowledge you will ever need. How long will you walk in this endless circle of learning and never knowing? You thirst for knowledge for knowledge's sake, and it's blinding you to the truth. The truth is, it's Christ in you, the hope of glory. It's me in you that you need to be learning by fellowship. There are millions of books that you can read and thousands upon thousands of sermons, and these are not bad things, but they are not me. I created the scriptures and have protected them so you could study, but I don't want you to study about me. I want you to study with me. The truth is that my words are in the book, but I became flesh and blood and dwelt among you, and I still wear the flesh although it's been changed by the glory of the resurrection. I wrote a book, but I am a person, and some of you love the book more than you love me. Think of it this way. Suppose you heard about someone and you started reading about them. You fell in love with them because of what you read, but then one day they move in your home with you. But you just ignore them and keep reading and reading even though they are with you. Instead of fellowship with the one who moved in, you keep seeking them as if they never moved in. See how strange this is? Do you remember that I told the Pharisees that they searched the scriptures trying to find eternal life, but life is only found in me because the book is written about me? It's the same today. I live inside you, but you have more fellowship with the book and with sermons and teachings than you do with a living, breathing, eternal one who lives inside you. You go from meeting to meeting and conference to conference to try to find the one who already lives inside you. My loved ones, will you please believe the truth? I am in you and with you, and yet you act as if you're speaking to someone a million miles away. I am right here. It's me in your heart. Wouldn't it be more fun when you read your Bible if you read it with me and then you could ask me, what do you think about that? Wouldn't it be fun if you came to the revelation that I'm always with you? What if you get to the point where you can always see me at your right hand? What will this do for your faith? And what would this do to your fear and doubt? This is the truth of Pentecost. The God who dwells in heaven now dwells in people. You're the habitation of Holy Spirit. You are my dwelling place, but you don't see me. You see your problems, you see your bills, 
You see the chaos that's in the world, but you refuse to see me. Please, my beloved, see me. You have ears to hear. You have eyes to see. It's your unbelief that I'm truly with you that's blinding you to this truth. Just because you don't see me doesn't mean I'm not here. Did you ever have someone sneak up on you and you didn't know they were there? Were they there? Yes, they were there, but you didn't see them. Your blindness to them didn't change the truth that they were there. I am always with you. You can believe it or not. If you do believe it, you can see me in every situation in your life, working with you and through you to change all things. If you don't see me, then you tend to try to fix things yourselves, and you don't see where I'm trying to help you. This leads to more unbelief and more problems. I want you to see me. I want you to know that I am with you. Many of you will quote the scripture that says, well, it's more blessed to believe without seeing. Well, too late, you already believe. So you're past that now. So why don't you see me? It's because you let the darkness of this world blind you. Do you remember what I said through my beloved John in the letter you call First John, where he said, if anyone claims I'm living in the light, but hates a brother or sister, that person is still living in darkness. Anyone who loves another brother or sister is living in the light and does not cause others to stumble. But anyone who hates another brother or sister is still living and walking in darkness. Such a person does not know the way to go, having been blinded by the darkness. There is so much of the world in my church. People walking in unforgiveness of others and not walking in love. So much jealousy and fighting for prestige among those who should be washing the feet of the ones they're trying to be lord over. My children have set their eyes on the world. and Their eyes have become filled with what they're staring at. Now they can no longer see me because they're blinded by the world. As long as your focus is on the world or the things of the world, you're not seeing me. I'm in your heart and can be plainly seen if you will look with the eyes of your heart. As Paul, my apostle, said in the letter to the Corinthians, For God who said, Let there be light in the darkness, has made this light shine in our hearts so we could know the glory of God that is seen in the face of Jesus Christ. My Father's glory shines in my face, and my face is in you. You can see me when you look for me with your heart. When you look into my face, then my face shines upon you, and you will transmit that same glory for all to see. This is why the righteous will shine like the noonday sun. You will learn to see me as I am, and my face will light your face and my Father's glory will be seen by all. The secret is to look at me more than you gaze upon anything else. Don't look at the world and try to find truth. Look into my eyes and see the truth that makes you free. As long as I'm a faraway God, you will get faraway results. When I become the God who dwells in you, then you will walk in my power and my might. Yet this is another problem in the church. It is my Father's kingdom. It's His glory and His power forever. But many only seek us for that power and not for the sake of love. The only time they're intimate with us is when they're making a request. You have a term you use for those people. You call them gold diggers. They want my power and my might and my glory. But strangely... They don't want my holiness, my patience, and my long-suffering. I never ever used my Father's power for my own will. Yet this is common today, as many want my power just to validate their ministries. This is why there's no power in what you call the church. The real miracles and signs and wonders are in the earth, but they're being delivered from heaven by those who seek to be nameless and faceless, the ones who don't walk around with the cameras to capture Father's glory 
for their own uses. This will change soon as my children learn to see me. When you all learn to see my face and to see into the realm of heaven, you will no longer be gazing at YouTube and the internet. You will be amazed at who and what you see when your eyes are truly opened. So my loved ones, look into my face and learn to see me. Look for me in your heart. I am in your heart. This is the new covenant. I will walk in you and live in you and be your God and you will be my people. I will write my laws in your hearts and on your minds, not on tables of stone, but of beating hearts and loving minds. I took away all your sins. They are remembered no more. So walk in my light and my love by seeking my face and not my hand. When I become everything to you, you will be lacking nothing. I want to be your all in all. I want you to love me as I love you. I want you to seek me because you love me. Why seek things that wear out and things that never satisfy? I am the drink you want. I am the food you desire. I am the wealth you seek. I am the joy you long for. When I become your health, you will no longer need healing. When I become your life, then death will never touch you. I am the true love of your life. I have loved you before the foundation of creation. I have adored you for ages eternal. You are my delight and my desire. I live right here inside you, and yet you gaze into the sky looking for me as if I were far away. I want you to love me for love's sake, just as I love you. I don't want or need your money. I don't want or need your service. All I want is you, and I want all of you. I want your heart. We can only truly be one if you give your all to me. Please, my beloved, hear my heart. I am love. I am life. I am hope. I am joy. I am might. I am eternal, and I am not far away. I am right here. Look inside your heart and you will find me. Look inside your heart and see my face. And this is the end of the words he spoke to me earlier today. I sure hope these words encourage you. Until next time, grow rich in his grace. I do truly love you each and every one, and I thank you very, very much for your prayers. They mean more to me than you'll ever know. Thank you so very much, and I'll see you soon.